everyone. Uh, we're just going to get things started here. Let's give it a minute for uh, people to join from the waiting room. Thanks for joining everyone. We'll be getting started in a second. Um, thanks uh, for holding on. All right, we've got a lot of interest here. So a lot of people joining. Uh, we'll be with you in a minute. So I Hope everybody is uh, staying safe and healthy out there. Um, we'll, we'll be presenting to you um, each from our own residences. So hopefully uh, everybody's connection is good. Let's give it another minute. We're still getting a bunch of attendees joining. All right, we have a lot of content. Um, thank you everybody for joining. And uh, today's webinar is part of our series. We have a deep dive enterprise manager webcast series and uh, it's been super popular. So although this one is the last one on the calendar, trust me, we're gonna have uh, many more. You'll see them starting to show up again in June throughout the year. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for uh, making these so successful. With me, as usual, we have the experts. Amal Chiplunker comes from our development team. Thank you for joining, Amal. And with me again, Harish Nidagata from Product Management. He's been with us before, and actually Harish his last uh, uh, session was the most popular topic to date on our webcast series. That one also had a security slant. So um, you can watch that the on demand from the webcast series page. Um, and I'll be flashing that link uh, at the end of our presentation today. So Arish, again, thank you for joining. And finally, I'm Tim Mooney from the product marketing team. A couple of logistics before we get going. Uh, because of the size of our audience, we have a number of expert panelists behind the scenes that are manning your Q&A tab. So um, you can ask your questions throughout our session. We will answer those in parallel through the Q&A panel. Um, at the end of our sessions, we will have some dedicated time for Q&A as well. So, this session is for you. Uh, we want uh, to know what your questions are and let us know the answers you're looking for. Uh, this is a great opportunity for you to get technical, ask for solutions directly from the source. Um, so again, use that Q&A tab. Um, we'll have that open throughout the session. So next slide, please. Let me give you a couple of seconds to read our safe harbor statement. And let's go to the next slide. So the basis of this presentation is really developed from our team working with a huge number of companies to help them secure their databases come up with practices and procedures to do that, to make sure they're compliant, not only with industry and regulatory requirements, but also their internal security policies. 
It's uh, broken down into three basic steps and we'll go through these in, de in detail. First, you set up your security standards. Um, you take your Oracle database parameters and set up those policies uh, based on the requirements that you're looking to accomplish. Second, it's about continuous monitoring and you use Enterprise Manager to do reporting of any security violations. And then finally, you analyze and remediate any of those issues that you come across. So this is what we're gonna to go to in technical detail. Um, uh, this is essentially the format based on working with a whole bunch of uh, customers like yourselves. Next slide. So here's our agenda. Um, I'll start with a basic overview of Enterprise Manager just to get us oriented to the topic in general. And then I'll turn it over to Harish to go into some of the details about um, security and the challenges in lying there. And um, we will, uh, uh, the experts will do, run a demo this is arguably the most important piece of our agenda today. So you'll see firsthand how this stuff works. And then lastly, you have a Q&A session uh, dedicated for your questions. So again, throughout the session, use your Q&A panel to ask your questions, and then we'll dedicate some additional time at the end for Q&A. So historically, this has been, uh, a super interactive uh, session. Um, so please uh, put your questions forward and we'll address those as we, as we get to them. All right, next slide. So Enterprise Manager is the de facto monitoring management and control solution for your Oracle databases and engineered systems. Going through the bullets on the right-hand side there, first of all, it's comprehensive for all your databases, all your engineered systems as shown in the icons on the left. Multi-tenant, uh, rack databases, engineered systems, exadata, all of this is supported seamlessly uh, by Enterprise Manager from uh, the existing assets you're running, as well as the most current releases from the database team. Um, so Enterprise Manager Development Team works very closely with the database team. So you'll see a lot of um, collaboration there and support from manager, Enterprise Manager for those most recent releases. Next bullet is fleet-wide automation, and that's largely what we're gonna focus on today in this session. This automation applies and gives you visibility across both your cloud assets as well as your on-prem assets. And this gives you that ability to scale your database team, helps you to get repeatable results um, with using leveraging automation. Another piece about Enterprise Manager that uh, doesn't always get as much attention is this notion that it's an integrated package. You use the same infrastructure for diagnostics, for tuning, for your life cycle activities. And this level of integration just makes it incrementally easier for you to manage the entire life cycle of your database assets. All right, next slide. So again, going from that uh, middle bullet, uh, today's session, we're gonna be talking about database lifecycle management pack. And I'm just gonna say the key here is in the mil middle of that first paragraph, it's all about automation. Um, Harish will go into some of the uh, features here but the idea is to automate your provisioning, patching, upgrades, and so on. In our case, we're gonna be talking about using automation for compliance and security purposes. The end result is it helps you scale. It eliminates manual and time-consuming tasks and just helps you be more productive, more predictable in the activities that you're doing. 
So with, it, with that, I'd like to turn it over to you, Harish. Thanks, Tim. Let's look at uh, database lifecycle management pack a bit more. In this pack, there are key features which are provisioning, patching, and configuration compliance management. You will be able to provision single instance rack and multi-tenant databases using the DBLM pack. You could use the user interface provided, or if you want to automate that, you have, we have the ability for you to use the automation uh, vehicle for provisioning all types of databases. The second feature is around patching, which supports subscription-based patching. We call it fleet maintenance. Fleet maintenance essentially allows administrators to patch and upgrade database software with minimal downtime. It enables you to update your fleet at scale across your database estates, significantly reducing the time required for maintenance activities. The third key feature in this DBLM pack is configuration and compliance uh, management. Using that, you can compare configurations of supported targets to analyze the drifts from your security policies. You have an ability to review your current inventory usage you can determine the different types of databases that you're using, how number of databases that you're using, the for duration that you have been using, and, and, and other targets too, like host and uh, entire Oracle stack and third-party products. This pack also includes out-of-box support for industry security standards like Stake, CIS, and Oracle's own standards for security compliance. You can use any of these uh, security standards to monitor and ensure your databases are securely configured and stays secure. So let's look at this area in a little more uh, detail. Uh, to begin with, uh, let, let's look at uh, some of the security challenges that you deal with it regularly. These are something that, that is probably not new to you. Uh, you know, the, one of the first security challenges uh, around uh, making insecure configuration changes and not knowing about it. It only increases the risk for security exposure. And you having limited visibility into security compliance of your database configuration leads you to dealing with this unknown vulnerability in your data center. Thousands of databases end up with unprotected sensitive data. It could be uh, data like uh, credit card numbers, social security information, or payroll details, et cetera. So you as a, a security officer you were, you will, and also administrators, you will be asking questions like, are relevant security policies in place to protect all the table columns that hold sensitive data from inappropriate access? How do you monitor these security policies continuously to ensure no unauthorized actions are happening? And lack of these policies to protect sensitive data only elevates uh, the security risk. Another kind of challenge is around user privileges. And some of the questions that you constantly ask are around things like, are user accounts secure through strong passwords? Are there limits for the users in, in place? Uh, do user accounts have relevant restrictions such as profiles, default role, or even table space restrictions? Do we have appropriate privileges and roles for each user in place to restrict access to the data? Now, if you take an example, say uh, you, you'll have, have questions like, are only known number of users granted table, table privileges that need to query a table? And finally, uh, it's about auditing. I mean, if you don't have auditing in place and you don't have uh, limited privileges to various users, and if you are not continuously monitoring, it only increases your security risk. Lastly, the lack of enterprise-wide tools to continuously monitor and assess these databases for security posture is a huge challenge. And whenever there are violations, not having an uh, ability to remediate that and make sure that you bring the database configuration back into compliance is a challenging task for database administrators today. In the rest of this uh, webcast, uh, I will use some of these challenges as examples 
to articulate how enterprise manager can help you continuously monitor your targets for security and compliance with your own policies. So with challenges like this that you need to deal with, how do you go about ensuring your database configurations is secure, right? So depending on the hat you wear within your organization, you'll play a different role with different responsibilities, but everything is focused around the security of your database assets. Say for example, if you are a CISO, you want to know if your uh, databases are compliant with your own security policies. And the reason why a CISO cares about that is they want to know uh, that it, is it has a compliance uh, posture in place all the time at the desired level. Uh, if not, determine the next steps to address SLA violations. If you're a security officer, uh, your objective will be ensuring compliance SLS to various LOBs or line of businesses. To that effect, you will be regularly reviewing the current security posture of these database targets. And depending on that, you will have you know, required resources deployed to ensure uh, compliance. The third hat uh, that, that we can think of as the database administrator, right? You are the one who will primarily be looking at all the violations and working towards remediating each of these in a prioritized manner as quickly as possible. So essentially within an organization, depending on the hats you wear, you do have tangible pain points to ensure security of your database uh, targets. And this is where enterprise manager comes into play. Enterprise manager as your management tool caters to address these pain points. Uh, EM or enterprise manager provides you a continuous security compliance check mechanism that can be done at scale. You can have thousands of database targets and you can associate all those targets to one compliance standard and you can get a security posture for all these targets in one go. And enterprise manager automatically scans your databases for security, security compliance every 24 hours. Of course, if you desire, if, you, if, you, if your policy uh, states that you need to do the check for uh, at much uh, faster frequency, like every 12 hours, you can customize it to do so. And in case of uh, violations, uh, Enterprise Manager provides you a recommendation for each violation to remediate and you can automate that remediation. And you will be notified uh, about every violation for your analysis. And you could do all these uh, with uh, ready to use uh, compliance standards that are available out of the box with database lifecycle management pack. So these are the, uh, some of the broad set of uh, uh, standards provided by enterprise manager. CS benchmark for database 12C was supported in the latest version of uh, enterprise manager, which is 13.4. We support uh, compliance for single instance, cluster, and container database targets. Enterprise Manager also supports STIG standards that are periodically published by Department of Defense. We support STIG standards for both 11.2G and 12C database targets. And Enterprise Manager also supports Oracle's own set of uh, security best practices and recommendations for all supported uh, database targets, I mean, like uh, different database versions, and also different target types like single instance, rack, and multi-tenant. Out of the box, you will see thousands of checks in the library. And depending on your requirement, you can choose various checks that you need, whether you want to focus on just the database initialization parameters, or you want to monitor just the user privileges, or you want to do more broader checks. You can choose specific uh, rules or checks that are there and use that for monitoring your targets. You can use these standards as is, or you can further customize to align with your own uh, uh, security policies. You, you, can, uh, you have an opportunity to leverage uh, Oracle provided uh, rules matching with your own, or you can customize, you can add your own uh, uh, exceptions or uh, uh, modify the existing rules. Or you can also create new rules based on your policy and make it part of an existing compliance standard, or you can create a, a new custom compliance standard. So Enterprise Manager Co Compliance Library gives you this uh, flexibility to quickly build out atomic rules, have them in a compliance standard, 
and then associate targets to start continuously monitoring your targets for security posture. Here is a partial list of uh, Oracle's own set of uh, security standards. There are unique standards available for each of the database target type. You can choose any of these uh, standards, again, based on your requirement. So for example, let's say uh, for pluggable database, uh, if you want to monitor privileges or you want to re uh, restrict access to various tables, uh, you could use a, a standard called basic security configuration for uh, pluggable uh, database. There are rules in the standard for monitoring these privileges like access to audit trail table, users table, history table, et cetera. Uh, another example could be around, say, for example, on the cluster database, if you want to monitor privileges and you want to audit various types of privileges for uh, users or various table access, you can use high security configuration standard as the rules in this standard addresses these requirements. In addition to the user privileges, table privileges, this standard provides rules for enabling auditing feature. So there are a large set of unique compliance rules for pluggable single instance and cluster database targets supported in the Enterprise Manager. So depending on your use case, you can use any of these standards as is, or you can customize it. So now let's look at how you can use Enterprise Manager to monitor, analyze, and remediate violations, and thus ensure compliance of your databases. We will use CIS benchmark as an example, but pretty much all the steps that are applicable for other standards provided by Enterprise Manager, uh, including uh, Oracle's best practices and your own uh, custom standards and rules. CIS benchmark gives you a set of best practices for secure configuration of Oracle 12C databases. Enterprise Manager supports standards for single instance cluster database, container databases, and there are about 100 plus uh, uh, individual checks for uh, each uh, database profile. Uh, we support both a traditional and unified profile. So there are about 100 plus uh, rules, uh, checks available there. And all rules are agent side. That means uh, any time a rule is run or any time you want to check the compliance of the target with CIS benchmark, the rule is, executed on the agent, it is done and on the agent and the latest information is gathered from the agent to EM and the security posture is determined based on the latest configuration of the target. And these checks are automatically done every 24 hours. And, and each rule can generate one or more violations <clears throat> to indicate deviations from the recommended secure configuration. The rules provided by uh, CIS uh, helps you continuously monitor any configuration vulnerability. You can uh, assess if users and administrators have least amount of privileges or not. And also uh, you could uh, put in place uh, rules for uh, auditing all administrative uh, privileges. You know, the CIS provided configuration checks can be categorized as database installation and patching requirements, parameter settings, database connection and login rec restrictions, user access and audit policies and procedures. Each group defines detailed requirements to ensure secure configuration of your uh, database targets. For example, let's say you want, to, you want rules to ensure certain users have broader privileges while some have restricted access to various database components, like again, tables, packages, objects, et cetera. Uh, there are uh, subcontrols or rules available under uh, user access and authorization restriction group. And you could uh, use those rules to put, put these kind of uh, uh, policies in place. I'm going to just take an example here for uh, going to take user access and authorization restrictions as an example to just show you how you could go about doing it. Oracle provides recommendations for securing your user accounts and privileges. The recommendations are grant necessary privileges only. Do not provide uh, database users or roles more privileges than necessary. It also Oracle also recommends to restrict privileges like uh, you know uh, create any job 
or become user, export full database or import full database, since these are very powerful security privileges. So Oracle recommends grant these privileges to users who need them and not to, uh, to a broader uh, set of users. With all the compliance st standards and rules that we went through moments ago, Enterprise Manager Compliance Framework, you will be able to check to ensure user access and authorization restrictions are in place. So as an example, right, I mean, audit trail table contains all audit records for databases. And if anyone unauthorized, a grantee has access to this uh, table, it only means that that un unauthorized access uh, grantee can modify audit records or uh, he, can, he or she can hide uh, unauthorized activities. So there is a rule uh, to revoke all from unauthorized grantee for this audit trail table. So you could use the SQL statements uh, provided to restrict access to this table. Once you have these uh, uh, privileges for unauthorized grantee, uh, with EM you'll be able to monitor and flag any deviations from this rule. Of course, there are rules uh, uh, and SQL statements for other uh, tables like history uh, or, uh, or users table. Another example is around auditing. As we are saying, auditing is primarily, uh, you know, monitoring and recording of all the user actions, whether it's the database administrator or an application user or the type of SQL statements that you execute. And it audit helps you uh, investigate any suspicious activity. And all this uh, regulatory compliance uh, requires auditing. I mean, compliance is like SOX compliance, HIPAA, EU privacy, all of them require some kind of auditing to be in place. So EM provides you that standard Oracle auditing controls in standards that it supports for all uh, types of uh, standard auditing, whether it's object, statement, and privilege auditing. So as I mentioned earlier, you, could, uh, you, can, uh, you can enable the all audit option on audit trail table. This will audit all activities on the audit trail table. So if any unauthorized user attempts to access this table, there will be an audit record of your investigation. So now let's look at how a database security assessment can be done in Enterprise Manager using CIS Benchmark. This is the end-to-end -end flow. This is the typical workflow that you will uh, experience when you try to set up and uh, start monitoring uh, your databases for security compliance using Enterprise Manager. So the use case here is a DBA is required to assess security compliance of 12C databases against CIS benchmark. So the very first step is you select a standard, whether you want to do, a, your, if, if you're targeting a cluster database target or a single instance uh, target, then uh, you, 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 you can review the rule definition for each of the categories for that standard. And if you want, depending on the policies that you have it in place in your organization, you can modify the rule definition using the SQL query uh, that is uh, provided in the product. So for example, uh, one of the connection here is failed login attempts uh, uh, should be less than or equal to five. And uh, if you click on that, you get the SQL uh, uh, query statement for that. And you can uh, uh, make changes depending on your requirement. And once you're done with that, you can associate the target to the standard. And, and the moment you associate the target uh, to the standard, the compliance check uh, gets initiated. And once all SQL checks are executed on the target, you are ready to review your uh, results and analyze any violations. You can choose to uh, uh, remediate a violation manually or automatically, or you can choose to uh, suppress it for a given period of time. Compliance check is a, is a continuous process it runs every 24 hours or at your desired uh, schedule. Uh, uh, with EM, you, you have an ability to validate conformance uh, for multiple target types you, uh, using the compliance uh, framework. Uh, you can create a framework consisting of, say for example, your engineered system target uh, standard, uh, standards and your database uh, security standards and you can get an aggregated view of uh, the overall security posture for your entire uh, uh, system. And, and you, could, you, you could drill down to look at target specific compliance score and analysis. 
And if there are any violations, you could remediate using the uh, SQL query recommended and, um, and, and get the uh, violation uh, remediated. So as I said, this is a continuous uh, uh, process and uh, uh, you'll be able to uh, review this uh, on a continuous basis and you, you'll be able to generate a report for your offline analysis. So that's a uh, quick uh, uh, peek into uh, enterprise manager configuration and compliance management in terms of uh, uh, what uh, EM can do for uh, managing and monitoring and uh, 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 ensuring uh, security compliance of your database targets. We have a demo and uh, I'll just run through the demos uh, storyboard here. Uh, it, it basically, the demo introduces you to uh, a compliance framework and standard, and it shows you how to uh, associate a target to the CS benchmark and, you, and ability to review results for the database target. And we picked three uh, compliance checks uh, as shown in the table here. Uh, all three are uh, around uh, user access and uh, authorization restrictions uh, category. And um, we will show you uh, how uh, you remediate uh, those three uh, violations for these three roles. Again, we are using CIS benchmark as an example, but this, this exact same flow can be used with uh, other standards that uh, uh, enterprise manager supports. So here is the demo. Enterprise Manager allows users to check if their assets, such as hosts and databases, are in compliance with industry standards, uh, Oracle best practices, and their own internal organizational uh, policies and recommendations. Uh, the users can achieve this by using the Enterprise Manager compliance user interface. Um, so let's take a look at uh, the Enterprise Manager by logging in first. The primary focus um, of this session is to demonstrate how a database administrator can use Enterprise Manager to check the compliance of database targets against uh, Center for Internet Security, also called as CIS industry standard. The starting point of this exercise is the library view um, in the compliance menu. Uh, the library view can be pulled up from here. The library view is organized into various compliance artifacts, uh, which follow a hierarchical structure. Um, there are compliance frameworks, compliance standards, and compliance rules, um, which are uh, of relevance for this session. Uh, the compliance rule is the single unit of compliance check uh, to be performed against the desired target. Uh, the compliance standard is a collection of one or more rules and the compliance framework is a collection of one or more standards. So to um, begin our demonstration today, uh, we'll take a look at the CIS framework. So the compliance CIS framework uh, contains um, it's a collection of uh, standards. Uh, the compliance CIS framework contains two standards, one for the cluster database and the other for uh, the single instance database. Uh, the point to be noted here is that compliance standards and compliance rules are specific to target types. And they map to one and only one target type. So we'll take a look at the compliance standard for um, single instance database. So you can go back, uh, you can um, take a look at the standard from this page by clicking on the, the compliance standard, which brings up this view, or uh, the user can also go to the library view and uh, pick up the compliance standard. 
So as you can see, there are two compliance standards, one for the cluster database target and the other for a single instance database. We'll take a look at the standard for single instance database. The compliance standard uh, has uh, more than 100 rules as prescribed by CIS. The rules are organized into rule folders and the rule folders correspond to the high level categories um, defined by uh, CIS benchmark. So if you look at the uh, individual rule folders, you'll see the uh, rules uh, which are part of those categories. In some cases, there are subcategories under those rule folders. As you expand, um, you can see all those rules. So the broad level categories are Oracle database installation and patching requirements, uh, which includes some, ba some basic rules related to default passwords and so on. And then there are Oracle parameter settings in which um, there are rules around the database initialization parameters. Then there are some connection and login restrictions related rules. Um, then uh, in the next category, there are Oracle user access and authorization restrictions. Under that category, there are uh, further subcategories, um, specifically talking about de default public privileges for packages and object types and uh, excessive system privileges, um, role privileges, and so on. And finally, there is a category for audit policies and procedures. The standard, compliance standard is um, the only artifact out of all the compliance objects available in compliance library that can be associated to a target. And associating a compliance artifact, in this case, compliance standard, basically begins the process of uh, performing the compliance evaluations on those targets. The user can associate compliance targets to standards by selecting the uh, specific standard and either associating uh, the standard to one or more targets or associating the targets, uh, sorry, associating the standards to one or more groups. So associating the standard to targets can be done by opening the associate targets dialog box. Here, um, one or more targets matching the target type for which the standard has been created are displayed for selection and the user can select one or more targets. So once the targets are selected and then the user confirms the selection, the uh, process of associating the targets begins. And once the targets are successfully associated, the compliance checks begin. Now, uh, most important thing uh, to be noted here is that the compliance checks are initiated at this moment, as well as they are also scheduled to be run every 24 hours. So the targets undergo a continuous compliance check once they are associated, uh, once the target is associated to a certain compliance standard. Um, the, the checks are performed on an ongoing basis uh, by the uh, enterprise manager agents and the enterprise manager agents send the configuration data based on which the rules are evaluated for success and failure. So uh, let's click on uh, confirming the association which will initiate the process of associating the standard and start the compliance checks.
Okay. So the dialog box confirms that the compliance standards were submitted to target for processing. So let's take a look at the results page. The results page for compliance can be accessed from the same menu. So the compliance results are organized again in the same uh, hierarchy of artifacts. There are compliance framework specific results, compliance standard specific results, and then there is a tab for target compliance. Uh, the grid view shows the high level aggregated results at the standard level. And for this standard, uh, you obviously see the target type it's applicable to and the number of targets evaluated plus their overall status. So in this case, there are two targets evaluated, which is what we selected and their overall status is um, they are not compliant because there are some failures. The next column in the grid shows um, the count of number of basically the, the violations and um, their severity. So in this case, it's showing uh, 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 more than 300 violations. And then finally, it's showing an average score, average compliance score of uh, this compliance operation for this standard. Taking a look at uh, the result details, um, we will find out what is the score at the individual compliance? What is the level of compliance um, of each target and which rules have been violated? So the details view is again organized in uh, this format. You have the actual compliance standard and rules um, on the left hand side in a view similar to the library view. And then the results are on the grid, uh, on the right hand side in a grid. The results show the compliance levels at each individual target level. And it also shows the overall pie chart for, um, for, the, for the standard. So in this case, as you can see, one, uh, one database has 153 violations, while the other one has um, slightly more violations than that. And the score for the second target is zero, which essentially means that nearly all rules or in fact all rules probably have been violated. The reason the number of violations is more than the number of rules is because one rule failure can generate multiple violations depending on the nature of the rule. I mean to take an example if the rule talks about or the rule is supposed to check uh, security or login permission settings for you database users, then there can be multiple database users that violate the rule. Hence, the number of violations are more than uh, the total number of rules. Expanding the rule folders uh, opens the view of all the rules that have failed. And you can select a specific rule and look at the violation details for that rule. For, in, for instance, in this case, um, the, the rule has failed for both the targets, but the number of violations are different. And clicking on the violation count pulls up the violation details. So in this case, the rule is ensure failed login attempts. It's less than or equal to five. But as you can see, the setting is not less than or equal to five. In fact, the setting is default. Um, the default setting with which every database is configured. And that's why it's a violation. And the database is essentially insecure. Now, um, you can also take a look at a full list of um, violations. If you select the standard and click on the count. In this case, it will open up the same ta tabular view and it will list all the rules and the corresponding violations. Clicking on the violation count will again uh, pull up the violation details. Such as this. <coughs> 
Uh, now, let's uh, take a look at specific violations and the reasons why the violations um, have, have uh, originated. So we can take a look at this category, Oracle user access and authorization restrictions. Under this category, you have uh, various subcategories. And one of them is default public privileges for packages and object types. Expanding that, we will see that um, all the rules have been violated. And if we specifically select, uh, let's say this particular rule, uh, we will see that there is one violation on each of the targets. Now selecting the rule obviously um, allows us to take a look at the violation count. In addition, you can go to this violation events tab to take a closer look at the violation for a specific target. So in this case, let's take a look at this insecure DB target. So selecting that specific violation pulls up a lot many details about the violation, the violation metadata, and more importantly, it brings up the recommendations for the violations. In this case, um, uh, it says to remediate this setting, execute the following SQL statement and the actual SQL command, uh, which is what has been specified by CIS benchmark in their documentation. So one can remediate this violation by executing this on the SQL prompt. It's also possible to remediate this violation by specifying a corrective action in Enterprise Manager. Alternatively, uh, the user can also ignore, decide to or choose to ignore this violation by going to the results tab and going to the manage violations tab and suppressing those violations. Now in this case, uh, let's try to remediate by actually executing this command and see how the results change once the command has been executed. So these are the commands that we will execute. And we will try to remediate three rules which have been violated. So as you can see, uh, there was a violation for UTL file. There was a violation for UTL IN ADDR and also for UTL TCP. So we basically performed the remediation action for all, the, all three rules. And Let's see how the uh, results reflect um, the, the changes that we made. So after the remediation actions have been performed and upon the receiving the latest configuration, if you revisit the results page, you will see that the violation count has changed. As I mentioned, once you associate the targets to a compliance standard, the compliance evaluation is performed in an ongoing basis. And every 24 hours, the latest collection is um, sent back to OMS for compliance evaluation. Purely for the demo purpose, I have forced a collection, but in, uh, the, uh, in the user environment, uh, the re-evaluation will happen automatically. Now, as you can see, the violation count has gone down from 347 to 344 because of the three violations we remediated. We can go back to the result details and open the same view, open the same rule folder, same subcategory. And if we select the same rule that showed the violation, it still shows a violation at the top level, but right now, the violation for that particular target has been remediated. Same is the case with the other three rules. The, the violation count for that particular target shows as zero. And for the other rules where the violation was not remediated, the violation count is still one for that particular target. So this is how um, the results show up after re-evaluation. From this view, the 
user has an option to go directly go to the target dashboard page to take a closer look at uh, the target from a holistic view point of view and within that target dashboard there is also a section for compliance so there is this dashlet for compliance which displays compliance specific information for the selected target so as you can see it shows one incident which says the compliance score is um, 41% which is below the critical threshold and it also shows that there is one compliance standard associated to this target and the score for that standard is 41% if you select that particular tar uh, that particular standard in this view it will bring back the results view but this time the result view is specific to only the, to that target and then you can see the violation count and the 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 score only specific to that target also the pie chart reflects everything specific to that target now if you pull up the same rule folder then you will see that a number of rules do not show violation because this target does not have any violation for many of those rules and you can basically pull up the same subfolder that we were looking at and then you will see that a number of rules do not uh, show the violation whereas the others still show a violation so as you can see um the compliance score is a good indication of the level of compliance um, of this target against an industry standard in this case uh, the cis benchmark which in basically is indicating that the database is insecurely configured and by following the exact procedure that we followed um, basically to remediate all these violations the target can be completely made secure or completely brought in compliance uh, by remediating all violations one by one and just the way uh, we should uh, in the demo so this brings us um, to the end of today's uh, demonstration of compliance feature in enterprise manager All right, that was great. <clears throat> thank you very much, Harish. That was uh, great detail. And, and you and the audience, thank you for all your uh, Q&A. All your questions are fantastic. Uh, a lot of detailed questions that we're still answering. Use that Q&A panel to ask your questions. Um, if we can't get everything answered during the session, um, uh, we'll, we'll have an opportunity to follow up afterward. A couple of notes. Um, there were some requests for uh, a copy of the slides um, and the demonstration. We will post that on uh, blogs.oracle.com slash OEM. So you, you see a link to a previous uh, blog post on CIS Benchmark. Um, we'll have a new post there as well covering uh, the details of this session. So. Um, you'll be able, you'll get a chance to review any of this stuff uh, in a couple days once I get that posted. Uh, so keep asking your questions. Uh, we'll keep this going as long as we can. Um, we've got a few more minutes. Um, so uh, it's up to you. Uh, any questions you have, we'll continue to support you. Um, I've got a few uh, resources that I want to highlight here. You can see our uh, other uh, manageability solutions on oracle.com slash manageability. I mentioned uh, the blog, uh, OEM blog. Uh, we've got a lot of articles there on previous webcasts as well as um, other topics. Um, we also have a YouTube channel, a Twitter channel, which is very active. We actually have uh, I think over 20,000 followers on that. 
Um, the bottom link there is this webcast series. So we're live now and this will be recorded so you can replay it on demand uh, in a couple of days. Um, you can see the others in the series there as well. Um, so if you want to uh, check out any of the previous uh, webcasts, you'll find those there. And this is the last one in the series. Um, this is the closing in on the end of our fiscal year. So we do uh, have a number of them in work. Uh, you'll see a bunch of new items on the calendar there uh, in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for that. This has been really popular, a lot of interaction, a lot of Q&A. So um, um, I think that has been well understood on our side and we'll keep doing these. So I see we're still getting a bunch of questions. Um, Arish, can you, uh, can you go to the next slide and I'll just um, highlight a few other things while we're answering those uh, questions on the Q&A panel. So uh, recently we announced uh, the availability of Enterprise Manager 13.4. That was a major uh, release for us. Um, Again, a lot of features around managing on-premises and the cloud with less effort, with more scale. Uh, some of that you could see here with uh, the lifecycle automation and control. There's increased visibility and new analytics. I'll just say um, there's a huge number of new uh, database and engineered systems targets that um, you can visualize. There's also some new analytics, including some artificial intelligence uh, that you can leverage out of 13.4. And uh, the last bullet there, um, secure, accessible, and extendable. A um, Couple of new features there. First of all, we have a mobile app. Uh, it's pretty cool. A lot of people are pretty excited about that. So take a look for that, as well as uh, Grafana plugins. So for those of you that are using Grafana, you can leverage your enterprise manager data. All right, we're still getting a bunch of questions. Uh, let's go to the next slide, Arish. Okay, this is relatively new as well. We uh, have made enterprise manager available on Oracle Cloud infrastructure in a place called the Marketplace. So uh, what does that mean to you? A few things. First of all, take a look at the latest version of Enterprise Manager without having to stand up or configure something in your own data center or your own environment. Use Oracle Cloud infrastructure to do that. Um, you can get a full install in less than an hour. Um, it gets updated regularly. So stay tuned there. You'll see updates to that package. Um, right now it's supporting database 19.5 for the repository. It's running on Linux 7.6. Um, there's many shapes and configurations available. Um, so take a look at that. There's a lot of uh, opportunity to scale what you're doing and get a first look at the latest features in Enterprise Manager. Harish, any other comments you want to add? Uh, no, that, that's pretty much what it is. I mean, uh, let's continue to answer questions. If, if we can't uh, finish up the questions, we'll be happy to sync up offline and have more discussions that are specific to your uh, environment requirements, your security policies, and your challenges. So then we can fine tune and uh, discuss more in that context. Yeah, that's great. All right, we still got a few more questions that we're working on. So uh, keep those coming. Um, we'll try and answer all these uh, before the top of the hour.
So Harish, one of the topics here is database 19C. Do you want to talk about how you can use um, Enterprise Manager to support uh, security standards for 19C? Sure. So as I said in, during the uh, slide where um, there are different standards available that within Enterprise Manager. Oracle has its own set of standards, uh, things that we talked about, basic security standard, uh, high security standard, and various other standards. Those standards you could use today with uh, database 19C. Um, but if you're looking to use uh, other standards like STIG or CIS, uh, they are still working on a standard for that. CIS is currently working on a standard for 19C and uh, uh, as soon as they publish that standard, then EM enterprise orga manager organization will be able to provide support for that. And similarly, STIG, the Department of Defense, uh, DISHA is working on a standard for 19C. As soon as they publish it, enterprise manager team will support that. Okay, great. But, but if you want some security, rather, if you want a good comprehensive security uh, posture uh, and monitoring of that in place today for database 19C, you could do that today. Uh, using uh, Oracle's uh, uh, security standards that come out of the box with Enterprise Manager. So Harish, would it be possible to clone the 12C CIS framework and use it against the 19C databases? Uh, we, we don't recommend that uh, because it's a, a given uh, CIS benchmark a published CIS benchmark or a certified CIS benchmark is tied to the version of the database. So if they say uh, there is a CIS benchmark for 12C, then uh, we certify it against 12C and we recommend you stick with 12C database targets only. And um, as I said uh, earlier, if at all uh, you, are, um, you are looking to have security policies in place for 19C, um, Today, from CIS perspective, we don't have it, but you could use uh, Oracle's standards. Okay, great. All right, we're still getting questions. I'll try and stay on here for a little bit longer um, and see if we can get all of those wrapped up. All right, I wanna say thank you to our audience and thank you to Harish and Amal for the presentation and thank you for all the panelists answering Q&A. Really appreciate it. Hope everybody's staying safe and uh, uh, thank you for your attendance and check us out on blogs.oracle.com slash OEM. You'll see uh, a lot of follow up there. We'll be following up with some of you that have asked questions. Um, so thanks for that. And with that, I think let's call it a wrap. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Um